Hello, Steve White Trek Boy 89 for Steve Vars 89. Well, it's the 58th anniversary of the original Star Trek and the 60th anniversary of The Cage, so I thought I'd do a marathon because I've gotten out of the habit of watching Star Trek because I've sort of been turned off Star Trek by new shows. But I wanted to get back into it, so I thought I'd do a marathon. So I thought I'd wait till Sunday, which is the 8th, and I'll watch the whole first season at least and try and watch the whole series in as few days as possible. Um, but unfortunately I was sick. Um, I was sick the whole day. I didn't get up till 9 p.m., I just ended up watching The Cage late at night. And then, same thing up the next day, I, was, I got up late, was sick, went back to sleep, slept until 9pm, um, and didn't end up watching the show. Um, and I just ended up watching the second pilot on its own. And it was interesting to watch those two pilots on their own as like single like movies, and particularly the original pilot, the original pilot version of, of that episode before they um, edited it to match the format of the whole series. But um, then I went to watch the series. And I forgot something that was really annoying. Um, now, back in the day, you know, we had videos of Star Trek and we'd get random episodes to start off with, but eventually we're kind of spoiled with the time life, like mental ones and all that, just random ones. Um, and we ended up being kind of spoiled with the time life videos where we got, we initially just got Space Seed and the Changeling, but then we got The Cage. And see here, episode one. That's how you're supposed to watch it. The Cage is episode one. When No One's Gone Before is episode two. The Call Night Maneuver is episode three. And there's a progression there. They don't work out of order. You, that's how you watch them. Unfortunately, because of the production issues at the time, some of the early episodes took longer to finish because they had more effect shots, like the Call Night Maneuver, which had all the serious shots. It was like the eighth episode to be finished, and that's when it aired. Um, Whereas when no one's gone before didn't air because they thought it was too intelligent, so they went and found a more crowd pleasing episode, The Man Trap, and they showed that first, even though the first episode was the best episode. So they showed them out of order, and when they showed them on video, it was fine. Like I said, you got the cage first, and then you got like the next couple of episodes, and you get these each month, you get two episodes a month, and then eventually they were just sold on their own. And like I said, it was kind of spoiled because. They were the same prints that ended up on DVD in there anyway, so they're good quality, but they were in order um, with information on each episode. It was really nice. But then when they released them on DVD, they went with the order the episodes were shown in, not the production order. I don't know why they did this, because when they originally released them on DVD, they did them as three episode single disc releases, and aside from showing the cage at the end um, as the last disc, which I guess started that trend, um, they did show the episodes in the production order and they were easier to watch. This way is a nightmare. So, um, first off, I wanted to watch The Cage. So, I had to remember to go to Season 3 to get The Cage because they have The Cage and When I Was Gone for the original pilot version on the last disc as like a special feature disc. Um, then I had to go to Season 1 to watch Season 1 and I had to go to the third episode to find When No Man Has Gone Before. And then when I wanted to start and watch The Corbin Night Maneuver, I thought, oh, that's right, it's on the next disc, because it's not on the same disc, which is annoying. It's on a separate disc. So I put in the next disc, I go through window, the enemy is the enemy of in, Mud's Women, What a Little Girl's Made Of, My Ride, Dagger of the Mind, I'm like, it's not on here. So it's on the next disc, it's on the third disc. The Corbin Night Maneuver is the, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's like the 10th episode of the series, um, when it really was the first real episode. Um, so that's a nightmare, and... So you have to swap around discs and everything. Now, the problem was, I bought the digital copies back in the day, and I was able to watch them in whatever order I wanted, but because either they weren't available in 1080 or I just bought the 720s, they're not as good a quality as the Blu-ray. So if I want to watch it properly, I have to watch the Blu-rays, and I have to swap backwards and forwards and go through the menu and everything. And Because the other thing that's really annoying, the menu on here, um, the disc, when you put the first disc in, it blasts out the J.J. Abrams 2009 trailer which starts with Kirk stealing the car, it's just this really loud car, you know, racing and all that, and it's like, you have to, like, get ready with the menu to, like, press, you know, um, um, the menu to get out of that trailer before you have to watch the whole thing. You can't get around it. It has to start before you can skip it. It's maddening. Who thought that that would be good long-term, that people were going to want to watch that trailer for the rest of their lives when they watch the original series, and every time they go to watch that, they're going to want to see that. So, and the menu is really nice, it's just the Enterprise hovering above a planet with the, you know, the sound of the bridge in the background, it's really nice, but to get to that, you have to get past that trailer. 
So there's a few things that are really annoying about um, the Blu-ray release. And the other thing that really irks me is Season 3 is narrower. When you buy the Australian version, it's the same thickness. But I kind of, I've been meaning to do it because the, the US series came out first. The release came out first. I bought that first because I couldn't wait. Um, I mean, I bought the HD version first, which um, was HD and DVD, and then that failed. Um, then they did DVDs, and then they did the Blu-rays. But um, at least when you put the animated series and um, the Roddenberry archives next to it, it doesn't stand out so much. But um, So that's my little review of the DVDs and the Blu-rays and the videos and the whole viewing experience and my marathon and everything. Um, I'm going to continue on watching The Golden Night Maneuver and onwards. And um, I guess I'll do season reviews and one day maybe I'll do episode reviews when I've got time to research one each episode properly. But I'm going to go.